I assume you're not going to claim that this just levitated itself into your purse. No, you're not a fool. Thank you. So you spent all that energy trying to convince me that you're trustworthy, and you were very convincing, by the way. And then you take this. What do you want to do with it, Anna? I'll let you do the math. You're going to test it to see if I'm telling the truth about my research. Is that right? You're amazing. <laughs> that is almost like a compliment. Oh, no, it is. And yet here you are, standing there, smiling, cool as they come. But you're ready to believe that I injected myself with a drug and what? Stage that whole performance last oh, night? No, no, no. You weren't acting last night. You were seriously ill. So you think I actually made myself seriously ill to prove that I am not Proteus? Which means that you still believe that I am Proteus. Am I right, Anna? Do I still think you're Proteus? Is that what you're asking me? Yes, it is. Well, the one thing we know about him is that he has a medical background. At least, that's what we think we know. You could be wrong. Yeah, yeah. It could just be smoke and mirrors. And that's why he's known as the god of many disguises. That is the only thing we are certain about, that he's been able to keep this disguise going for so long. Because he's brilliant at play acting. And you fit the bill. So do you. You suspect me? Oh, that's a new twist. Why shouldn't I? No reason, I guess. Isn't it comforting to know that our relationship is on such solid and stable ground? <laughs> what, well, mutual suspicion isn't a solid basis for a relationship? Well, it's not with most people. But we're unique, aren't we? Are we? Or are we just... What? Never mind. Yeah. What did you want, anyway? Blind faith? Undying love and commitment. Sorry, Anna. I can't let anyone interfere with my research. No, your ticket to redemption and forgiveness. Maybe my ticket to Sweden and the Nobel. Not to mention a patent worth millions. <laughs> Money and power. It's nice to know the old-fashioned values aren't there. Yeah, I've always considered myself an old-fashioned kind of guy. Is that what you call it? Right now, Pine Valley, I get to look down at it. After I'm finished with this, Pine Valley will be looking up at me. Triumphant at last. How would you like to share that with me, Anna? Hmm? Or would you feel more triumphant bringing me down? You do have power over me now. You just ground my evidence under your heel. But you do know my secret. Yeah. I guess I do. So? with it now. Before I tell you what I'm going to do, why don't you tell me how it works? How what works? This miracle drug of yours, the one that could have saved Dixie's mother, that might someday save Dixie herself. How does it work? Well, I could tell you, but... I'm not sure you'd really understand. Oh, right, it'd go over my head. No, that's not exactly what I was saying. You didn't have to. You must hate this. Hate what? The fact that I've got the upper hand and you're having to ask me not to use it. Well, how would you feel if it was reversed? Yeah. You don't have to worry. I know how much this research means to you. I'm not going to tell anyone. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Do you think you could say that like you actually meant it? Oh, you mean 
like I actually believe that I can trust you. See, we're back to that again. You can trust me, David. You can. I'll prove it to you. It's never going to be simple with us, is it? It's simple what you want. I have to get back to Pine Valley. I have work to do. the valley in Vanessa. Waiting for me? Obviously, I wanted to see you, Dad. Oh, really? What for? You need help setting up your next tryst with your boyfriend in the front seat? David, really, I'm so sorry you found out about that little arrangement between Larry and me. Yeah, it was kind of hard not to. You were doing the nasty in my bed, remember? Let's not be crude, huh? Besides, we have far more interesting things to talk about. Mm, I had, um, well, first of all, I found out something quite fascinating about you, dear. I had the most interesting conversation sitting in the bar next to one Roger Smythe the other evening. <laughs> Why, the man certainly can down his martinis, can't he? <laughs> Damn it. He has really did get rather talkative. You know, David, I don't think I would have shared quite so much information with him had I been you. Well, it's not like I had much choice. No, no, of course not. You were too busy saving his life. He told me all about it. Well, you know, actually, I had no idea you were such a humanitarian. What the hell do you think you're going to get out of this? My research is vitally important, Vanessa. It will save lives. Yes, and it'll also make your household name a very rich household name, darling. And as Roger was saying, it might win you the Warneford Prize or... <gasps> Dare we dream the Nobel? There are no we's involved in my research. Well, that's where you're wrong, darling. You see, as the wife of the chairman of the board of the hospital, I can be very influential in getting you exactly what you want. Really? And what do you want in return? My son's happiness, of course. <laughs> oh, come on, give me a break. You're offering something, you want something in return. So come on, Vanessa, be straight with me. What's the bottom line? I've been trying to get in touch with you for two days, David. I left town. Mm hmm So did Anna Devane. You were with her, weren't you? It's none of your damn business. Oh, oh, oh. <gasps> mm, your future is my business, dear. And I do not want you to waste your time with someone like that. <gasps> oh, wait a minute. Excuse me. But since when do you think you have the right to tell me who I can and cannot spend time since with? Since now. You see, if you do want my help in winning with Winifred or the Nobel, trust me, my darling, you have no idea. Dear, how much I can help you. <laughs> but first, you're going to have to dump Anna Devay. Immediately. Are you going to... Uh, you, you can't just desert her. Not my choice, old woman. But what, you're going to just let her be devoured by the shark? She's the one who cut me loose, remember? Oh, Lord, it's like talking to a stone. You know, you two are perfect for each other. You are just as bullheaded as she is. Now, are you going to go in there with me or not? Chris, Chris, I need to talk to you. I've got some information. David Hayward. 